I'll confess, I'm a lens junkie. It started long before I became a professional, which is a blessing. I bought most of my lenses before I had to worry about income versus expenditures. But there are three types of lenses that I've avoided buying. The first is a cine lens, because in real world use, they're not so different from my photography lenses. And they're a lot pricier. The second is anamorphic, because they're stupidly expensive and offer only a niche use, the most striking of which is that anamorphic lens flare, something that can be accomplished nearly as well in post, or with a simple line of nylon wire. And I've never owned a tilt-shift lens, because I'm not an architectural photographer, and the tilt-shift effect can also be accomplished in post. Effects that are done in post are easier to control, though I will say that there is a quality when captured by the lens that is slightly different, more authentic and visceral, and actually technically different. But tilt-shift lenses are absurdly expensive too, so while there was an attraction, I never seriously considered one. Then I learned something I didn't know about tilt-shift lenses, something magical. I was prepping for a project that would require a lot of time in front of a mirror, and a tilt-shift lens can shift the perspective so that it looks like your eye, or the camera, is straight ahead, when in fact the camera is about a foot to one side. This makes it easier to hide the camera or mask it out in post. It's a little hard to believe until you see it. Still, the price tag for tilt-shift lenses is a real barrier for most people. Then I learned about this tilt-shift adapter. This one is made by PhotoDX, but there are a number of adapters on the market. And this adapter can actually do three things that you can't reproduce in post. One of the biggest drawbacks beyond the price of a tilt-shift lens is that it is only one size. You can drop anywhere from 800 to 2 grand on a 24mm tilt-shift lens, and you can only use it on shots that are suitable for 24mm. But an adapter will take any lens from 24 to 200, and the cost of this PhotoDX adapter is $200. Now, there are some caveats to keep in mind. The first is that it's an adapter, so it works well with mirrorless cameras. They don't have any issues with adding distance between the lens and the sensor. Because the adapter shifts the lens to one side, you will, on wider lenses, get a half vignette when pushed all the way over and you run out of sensor. Lenses wider than 40 millimeters will have this issue, but you can still get the tilt-shift effect to a lesser degree. Now, this occurs just with the sideways movement that allows one to hide the camera from the mirror or correct perspectives in architectural photos. There's no vignetting when it comes to the tilt, which is the movement that creates the blur effect. Being a dumb adapter, there's no autofocus, and there's no information that's being transmitted from the lens to the camera. You're entirely in manual mode. For me, this doesn't make much of a difference because I use manual focus Nikon lenses on my Sony camera. But if you have native lenses, you may rely on autofocus or using your camera dial to change aperture. So that could be a change in your workflow. But these are really the only shortcomings of using an adapter versus a dedicated tilt-shift lens. So how does a tilt-shift adapter work? Well, a tilt-shift lens can change both the angle of the glass itself, or it can shift sideways. Tilting creates blur, and sideways moves your camera off the direct line of sight. There's a twist knob for locking your tilt, and a lever you press to shift the lens. There's also a small button that allows you to rotate the adapter, so that both of these motions can go in any direction, up or down, whatever angle. Because you're angling the lens to create your effect, the amount of blur is dependent on three things. The angle of your tilt, the speed of your lens, and the aperture. For blur, it's important to use a fairly fast lens wide open. The adapter needs a shallow depth of field that it can manipulate. Now let's talk about the benefits and those three things that a tilt adapter can do that you can't recreate in post. But before I do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my work. It really does help me out. So the tilt shift has three basic functions. First, you can use it to correct your vertical lines when filming buildings. For most videographers, this might not seem so important, unless you shoot real estate video. Skewed vertical lines can be a huge eyesore when you pan the camera. You can, of course, correct your lines in post. The second function of a tilt shift is that funky depth of field effect. A tilt shift adapter tilts the focal plane of the lens, and this creates a rather otherworldly effect for surreal portraits and scenes. And when shooting landscape and environmental scenes, it can create this toy-like miniature world. This effect can be created in post too, but it's not quite the same. The reason is, is that when you do it in post, you're blurring a two-dimensional image. 
but when you do it with a lens, it's based on the actual distance from the camera. It's a three-dimensional blur, and if the object on the edge of your frame is closer to the camera, it's less blurry. A digital blur can't distinguish that distance. And here's where you can create a visual that's impossible to recreate in post. You can have two objects in focus at two different distances. It's challenging to do because the depth of field for both is shallow, but it creates an entirely different look. The tilt effect is a very unique specific effect, and it's unnatural and disorienting, so it's something you want to use judiciously. If the sole function of this adapter was to create this effect, I'd be reluctant to recommend it, even for $200. The third function is hiding the camera from its reflection by shifting the lens. You do get a little softness when you do this, I'm wondering if it has something to do with diffraction, but it's not the unnatural blur of the tilt. Hiding the camera from its reflection isn't a daily need, but this is actually the second time in the past 12 months that I've had to figure out how to keep my camera out of a mirror. And if you do fictional or commercial work, you'll probably find yourself in a bathroom at some point. Now let's talk about the Photo DX adapter specifically, because not all adapters are created equal. My adapter is for Nikon to Sony, but Photo DX makes a number of adapters to attach different lenses to different cameras, and they're all about 200 bucks. The construction of the Photo DX is all metal and it's very well put together. All of the movements lock so there's no drift, which is especially important when working with a shallow depth of field. The adapter fits snugly on both my Sony a7 III and my lenses. Overall, the quality is first rate. The Photo DX can tilt up to a 10 degree angle and it shifts up to 10 millimeters in either direction. This is on par with professional tilt shift lenses. The Canon 24F 3.5, for example, costs $1,900 and tilts 8.5% and shifts 12 millimeters. One of the clear advantages the Canon has is the ability to rotate the tilt and shift mechanism separately so you can shift and tilt in the same direction. But the Photo Deox has an added bonus that's even more helpful for video shooters. The adapter has an aperture ring and it's clickless. Declicked. The never thing clicks. No. The punchline is that you can pull aperture on your photography lenses, seamlessly adjusting your depth of field or adapting to changes in light when you move from outside to inside. The ring turns smoothly and there's enough friction that it won't move on its own, but not so much that you can't use a wireless follow focus like the Tilta Nucleus Nano. The aperture shift is the third thing you can't reproduce in post. When it comes to video, the two advantages that cine lenses have over photography lenses are a clickless aperture and no focus breathing. Most photography lenses will breathe when you pull focus, changing their angle of view slightly. And in reality, all but the most expensive cine lenses do that too, though often to a lesser extent. Now some folks will say, well, what about the Lens Baby tilt shift lens? You can get one of those for anywhere from $200 to $400. Now those create a unique effect, but they're hard for me to recommend. First, they only tilt, they don't shift, and you're restricted to whatever millimeter lens you buy. But the glass is also inferior, and the simple aperture blades are designed to increase that funky look. They're also known to vignette and flare. Unlike a real tilt shift, the Lens Baby is designed to have a sharp sweet spot in the middle, not a section of the focal plane. And you move that sweet spot around when you tilt the lens. So while it creates a modified tilt shift effect, it's not a versatile tool and you wouldn't leave it on your camera for other shots. After you have your basic kit of fast, sharp lenses, anything you buy tends to be for niche purposes. They're lenses with a unique quality that probably only make it onto your camera 5% of the time. And that unique niche lens, if it's sharp and fast, will set you back 500 bucks or more. So the versatility that you get from this $200 adapter is really impressive. Another great thing about the adapter is that in the neutral position, it has zero effect on the image quality. There's no glass, no fringing, no focus issues due to distance from the sensor. You can just leave it on your camera for whenever it's needed. And that's where mine is going to live, at least for the foreseeable future. It's a unique, intriguing tool at a reasonable price.